Hi, ladies. Today we are discussing the six signs that you have prolapse of the bladder and urethra. And these are complex issues. So we want to start by kind of orienting you. Prolapse can be like this big intimidating word yeah. for many women. If they've been diagnosed, they're usually frightened. And, and we understand because we've been there. If you haven't been diagnosed, you're also frightened because something feels wrong with your body. You know something's wrong with your body and you don't know what and you don't know how to fix it. So we want to orient you first to what actually is happening in your body under these cases. Then we'll talk to you about the six signs that you do probably have some of this going on, whether or not you've had a diagnosis. Yeah, stick around to the end because we'll, we're actually going to give you a couple of solutions that you can begin implementing today to help alleviate some of these symptoms that you might be dealing with. Very helpful. Okay, so first, Jen is <laughs> generous to share this image of her particular prolapse situation. This is as if take my body and cut it on the, from the side right here. And you're looking at it from the side through the pelvis. So we have a normal, a quote unquote, normal photo up here that we're talking, the compartment we're talking about today, the pelvis, the bladder and urethra is the part out outlined in red here. This is what it should look like from the side, the bladder and the urethra is nice and straight. The urethra is the tube that you pee out of bladder holds the urine pee comes out through this tube. You can see it's propped up nicely and there's a nice straight exit passage for that pee. Here you can see, so the prolapse is just the falling downward or into another space of one of one or all of these organs. Cystocele means the bladder is falling down and back. So you can see right here from here to here, actually falling down into the vaginal compartment and that nice straight urethra tube that you pee out of in this situation is kinked like a garden hose. It's literally smushed and compressed. Seeing that really helps understand why you're dealing with some of the things you are in this case. I also want to orient you with a three-dimensional model. Here's the pelvis as if it was right here in my body facing forward. Here's your pubic joint at the front, this hard part, the bony joint right there. Your bladder sits, this little red guy right here, your bladder sits just behind your pubic joint. So it's real low in the pelvis, even before prolapse <laughs> for a cystocele. And then let's look on the bottom. Let's remember the three holes. Here's urethra. This is where the pee comes out from the bladder through that urethra. Here's vagina, here's vaginal opening, and here's rectum way back here. And all this red, these are muscles. This is the pelvic floor. So this is what, for prolapse to happen, there's that downward falling and pressing of those organs into each other and downward through the pelvic floor and what's supposed to be the support system for those organs. And so just for clarification, that falling that you see in the other picture is coming out of the vaginal opening, but you can see how the urethral opening is also compromised there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. This really helps orient and explain and take some of the fear and the unknowing out of experiencing all this stuff. Yeah, so we recognize after speaking with different women and from our own personal experiences that oftentimes this can be called just pelvic organ prolapse. You may have been told, oh, you have a hernia of the vagina, or you may have gotten a specific diagnosis of a cystocele. It's actually rare. Or a urethra seal. Or a urethra yep. seal, but we yep. find that that diagnosis pretty much flies under the radar. But again, you can see from those images that if your bladder is falling down, the tube that you pee out of that's connected to your bladder is going to be impeded. Yep. And the fact that many women have not been di are living with this and have not been diagnosed is one of our soapbox topics. We want to let you know, if you feel like an injustice is being done, you're right. One in nine women have some amount of prolapse, and we believe that number to be severely underreported. We believe it to be more about 50%. And so why in the world is not every woman after having children being properly examined for prolapse? Why is it that we have mm -hmm. to go crying and screaming and bearing, pouring out our hearts for all these embarrassing issues just to get examined for this? And then very often being examined incorrectly. It's absolutely an injustice. We want to offer you some solutions today and help you connect the dots between what is going on in your body to empower you with that knowledge without you having to take that step, although you shouldn't have even had to take it. And we have done some shows in the in the past, um, three things that your OBGYN is not checking properly for. So if you're interested in kind of diving into the more specifics around that topic, 
you can go back and check out those shows specifically. But we're going to begin to discuss some of the signs because maybe you haven't had a diagnosis, but you know intuitively that something is wrong. You know, what we've found is many women have already gone to their OBGYN or possibly a urogynecologist and have expressed that they they're dealing with some of this stuff. Yeah. And they're complaining about these six signs and they're being told you're fine. Well, you had some kids a couple years back. I this is, this is normal. What this is what happens. Some of the OBGYN said, well, yeah, that happens to me too. I mean, yeah, just live with it by the pads and the, you know, grown up bladder prop. diapers and the bladder props and just live with it. And that does not have to be your story. And we're not against, you know, in terms of stages of prolapse, there are four stages of prolapse based on the degree. And just to give yeah. reference, this is stage two that, that you're just looking stage at. Stage means how far has the organ, how, how far has the <clears> organ <throat> fallen out of the, its original place. And our particular signature program has the best results with stages two and below. Although we have worked personally with women who have been, uh, diagnosed with stage three and above. And while their, their issues may not reverse in the way that mine have and some of the other women in the program, their, their symptoms certainly do get better, yeah. which is what we want to do is empower you with how can you make this better if surgery is not the route that you're looking to go with, or if you're not interested in pessaries, because maybe you've tried them before and they're uncomfortable, or that's just not something that you would, you want to do. A pessary is just basically kind of an internal permanent prop. It's a device that you insert up, up into the vagina that just is like most like scaffolding kind of holds everything back up and open in there again. And if those are not the routes you're looking to take, we are so happy to provide an alternate solution. But so what in the world does this feel like? Yeah. How would you know if you might have this going on? And number one, what would you say? Number one, I would say the first symptom that made me look down there was I was constantly feeling a lot of pressure and I would describe it as like, I thought maybe I had put a tampon in and like it was inserted incorrectly or kind of falling out. I would say that's the best way to describe that falling feeling. So if that's you, um, if you felt that way before, maybe, you, you know, we're like, did I, did I put a tampon in there? Is, is something not right? And maybe you look down there and you notice that your uh, Georgia O'Keeffe now looks like a Picasso is how I describe it. Um, for those of you that don't know art, it's it's a hot mess basically, right? Like what hole is what? What's yeah. going on down here? But that would be the the thing that caused me to further investigate and actually look down there. But there are several others that we're going to discuss today. The other signs, a big one is leaking, leaking urine, pee leaks. If you are laughing, coughing, sneezing, or jumping, and there is pee coming out when it shouldn't be, that is a big sign. You probably have some of this going on. Yep. A lot of women that we work with, they want, most women who work with us want to stay active with their kids and in their exercise programs. And they're finding that they're severely limited because they're soaking pads or at the very least having consistent small amounts of urine coming out into their underwear and they're having to wear pads and they're it's the smell, it's the embarrassment, it's the planning my life around this issue that has become, they're afraid yes. that maybe they're forever normal. It doesn't have to be. That is another issue that is common and frequent if you've got some of this going on. Well, I do want to put a caveat. If you are leaking urine, that doesn't necessarily mean that you do have prolapse but it means that you could have. So when we list out these, if you have several of these, that's a great indicator that more than likely you're dealing with some stage of prolapse, but not each one individually. Obviously the pressure and the falling, that's classic prolapse, but some of the other dysfunctions like the pee leaks and the urgency are also symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction, which is great because if it's just that, that can be changed and fixed so quickly that you will not believe. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Okay, so another sign, if you're like, oh, maybe this kind of sounds like me, I don't know. If you're peeing more than 10 times a day, you might be a part of, of, of dealing with some of this, either cystocele, urethroceal, that is outside the realm of normal, no matter how much water you're drinking. Um, and also incomplete emptying of the yeah. bladder, which kind of correlates with, with that. Yeah, so if you, 
pee and then like a few minutes later you have to pee again that's telling you that all the pee didn't come out the last time you peed and that is a, as we talked with the kink in the hose mm -hmm. right this image of you can imagine the tube is supposed to look like this so if it looks like this you know what happens when you twist that garden hose it literally just there's the fluid cannot pass through and so this can be this could be what's causing that I just peed and now I have to pee again a few minutes later because yeah. it just couldn't get all the way out. Yeah, and we do teach in our signature program specific potty positioning for this so that you are able to completely empty your bladder and it is life altering. Yes, and you're is. also not getting up at night to pee. Which yes, <laughs> we love to talk about because the women who work with us love to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Another sign is chronic UTIs. And that goes back to that twist in the garden hose. So I'll share a quick personal story of, I really had severe chronic UTIs and that was before getting my prolapse diagnosis. And, um, you know, basically when I went to the doctor, they were just like, well, once you start having these chronic UTIs, that's just how it's going to be, you know, and your signs and symptoms of UTIs after you've had multiple ones begin to get less and less. So the burning and the other things start to go away. And then before you know it, you've got a UTI, you've got a bladder infection, you've got a kidney infection. So, you know, if this is happening to you, something that you can begin doing today is doing a sitz bath in Epsom salt. It is a game changer. I do it multiple times a week and it can really help along with the other solutions um, of the proper potting position and obviously strengthening that undercarriage really stop those chronic UTIs. So do not believe that you just have to live with that. Yeah, because that means spending the rest of your life on antibiotics. And your and gut. Wrecking your gut, which we all know how important that is, especially now lately. Um, so that is an awesome mm. tip. And, and we come at this stuff from a very personal place because we've each lived versions of this ourselves and we've helped personally hundreds of other women navigating this. So we really do know what it feels like. Um, I think we, do we hit all the, all the marks? Almost. <laughs> the other one that is really associated with prolapse is that sense of heaviness. And again, Christina showed you in the beginning where the bladder sits right in that lower abdomen, yeah, right is, across that right pubic there. bone. That's so that heaviness in the lower abdominal or that heaviness Look through here. the vaginal opening, that tampon feeling, or maybe you wouldn't describe it like that, but there's a heaviness and a pressure there. And a lot of women will notice that it's actually worse during their cycles. So sometimes mm -hmm. because the uterus is heavy and that is pressing down on it even further. Here's uterus, so it's heavy and full. And then it's pressing down on poor bladder right here. So if you've already got this is full <clears throat> twice its normal volume when you're about to have your menstrual cycle and then it's pressing down on this which is this is already sunken in you can see where that causes increased problems and i mean to me did you ever feel like it feels like a bit like the end of pregnancy the pressure yes i don't know if that if uh, other women describe it that way but sometimes that's how the pressure would feel to me where like that last bit of pregnancy i just had my last one three years ago so i can still remember that um where it just feels like Ooh, like things are trying to escape. <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> down lot there. of pressure down there the, the same way as before. We want to get to your quick solutions here as well. So we already told you about helping with the urine retention because of that downward pressure on both your urethra and your bladder, um, those sits baths. And if you're like, Jen, I don't have time to get in the bathtub every single day to sit my bottom in the bathtub for five to 10 minutes, then take a plastic bottle, um, like a squeeze bottle, put some warm water in there, add some of the Epsom salt. And then after you urinate, irrigate with that, it will help get some of that bacteria you know, it will help irrigate and clean out the area. So you could do that each time you urinate when you're at home to try to help reduce some of the UTIs. And another great tip is simply adding electrolyte drops yes. to your water. So a lot of women, once they realize they're having the leaks and the frequency and they, you're starting to plan your life around where's the bathroom, how often am I have to change my pad? You start to decrease your fluid intake, which has wreaks other all sorts of other havoc. Uh, but in order to help your body make better use of the water you're already putting in, adding electrolyte drops, we recommend highlight electrolyte drops, and you can get them on Amazon. It's H I L Y T E, and adding how many drops is it? It's I do eight to ten drops per you know 
12 to 16 ounce glass of water and they're zero calories, no sugar, because I know a lot of women get concerned about that. These really are just trace minerals. So, you know, there's not really any taste to them per se. And it's just a real easy thing. It's a small bottle. You can carry it with you in your purse. And it's super convenient just getting in the habit of doing that. So you can reduce that water intake, but still stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. And that will become more important when we talk about the rear side of the bowl, for sure, in terms of consistency of your stool. Which is coming up. <laughs> We're going to have on all the pelvic highlights. <laughs> so if you still have questions, you know that you have a cystocele or your urethra seal or not, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us, hello at tightenyourtinkler.com. You can uh, send us a message via social media. We would love the opportunity to help troubleshoot for you. Um, our program does help significantly with prolapse within 30 days. Yep. And it's a 10 minute a day routine. And we have documentation of women reversing their prolapse, inserting nothing into their bodies, no foreign objects, yeah. no fingers, no nothing, no disrobing and no, no kegels. kegels, no sit-ups. It is whole body functional training for these muscles to help remind them through easy, simple whole body movements, what their job is without having to think about it at all. It's incredibly, it's incredibly powerful. It's empowering. It brings you back to you again you know, something's wrong with your body. You are right. I don't care what anybody else says. And you have a right to feel better too. Yeah. So reach out to us with any questions and we would be happy to answer those until next time, guys.